Well, on the line with me today is a very special guest, James Charles Phillips, also known as the Constitution Cowboy. And uh, it's an honor to have you on here, James. Um, I don't know a whole lot about you, but you're one of those telegram personalities that emerged in the wake of the stolen election of 2020. Um, And I think you came across my radar, I think, through Seth Keschel's channel um, as I was trying to find out what in the world is going on in our country. And um, I have enjoyed your channel because there's so much... uh, uh, there's so much doom and gloom. There's so much um, anger in in the world right now. I always found on your channel, though, the refreshing um, challenge to pray, to go out and do things. I love that you and your family um, seem to be going out to different locations, praying over things on God's assignment. And I haven't yet figured out exactly what you're doing, <laughs> other than it seems that you're kind of a, a freelance missionary of sorts. I know you're a retired Marine. I know you're extremely tall and, and, uh, and, a, and a very impressive man, uh, just in a physical, from a physical standpoint, and that you have uh, nine children. Um, and so there's a lot of, a, a lot of things to be uh, talked about right there. But uh, why don't you just start with letting us know who you are and how you got on Telegram and, and why you're doing what, what it is you're doing. Well, I love... Uh... I love Jesus, and I cuss a little. Um, that's been a... I came to know him when I was five years old. I was raised by a good dad who completely understood that this life is about the next life. And we are... He, he put his hands on me and prayed with... put his hand on my shoulder or on my head and ask God every single day that I would be a mighty warrior in his kingdom. And, uh, you know, the longer he's been dead, the longer, the, the more I realize he, he got it, you know. Um, I've had social media for about uh, 12, 13 years now. And uh, it's funny because it kind of shows you can see just in social media where I've grown as a person, you know, if we haven't grown and changed in 13 years, <laughs> that's not good. The, the Christian walk, you know, I don't even, I have pulled away from the term Christian because it's been hijacked by so many groups and I just follow Jesus, you know, I used to be a Southern Baptist. Um, I just follow Jesus now. I'm not, you know, the Southern Baptist convention went off um, and voted in CRT, and that blew my mind. I was like, this is unbelievable. I had just left a little bit before that uh, because I saw that some of what was going on, I just saw the... You know, I'm not here to talk about the Southern Baptist Convention or any other entity. I think we we have got to pull away from groups and ask God where does our help come from ask him for discernment and ask him to show us patterns of evil and show us reveal to us what is meant to be hidden from us uh, interestingly enough when that when that CRT went through the Southern Baptist Convention the way they voted it through, the way they brought it to the floor, the way they sandwiched it in between other deals fit the same pattern that uh, Congress pushes through all their pork. Same, I mean, it's just, evil has a pattern. When we see it in our schools and our churches, we have to, we can't make excuses for it. We should prick our ears and ask, dig in deeper and ask God for discernment. Some of us will be called to change it from the inside out. Some of us will be called to leave and do something else. And I am one that is definitely not trying to bring an organization back to God. I'm like, forget the organization. Seek God yourself. And everything we do ought to be to encourage people to seek God and not follow us. 
So that's one you asked about Telegram. Uh, social media doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter. It means nothing. Somebody with a lot of followers doesn't have – there's so many people out here that are rock solid and speaking the truth, and they've got eight followers. Number of followers does not define a message. And uh, I like to say that uh, followers and likes will get you – you know, a thousand likes get you in this life. Same as well get you in the next life. Not a damn thing. <laughs> Just not what life's about. And so, you know, I used to do social media, try to break algorithms, and a lot of our business comes through social media, uh, or did. I've been doxxed so many times by Luciferians and Satanists at this point that, you know, my livelihood does not come through social media. It comes from God. And I don't have anything to, uh, you know, that I'm selling on Telegram. Um, it just came about, you know, I felt in my spirit that the elections were stolen. Uh, I remember back to when I had had a hand in a rigged election. And the second battle of Fallu after the second battle of Fallujah in 2004, I ended up running into one of the field operatives that ran the election on the inside while I was guarding the, the lines on the outside. God, when we seek truth, He has promised to let us find it, to lead us to it. And I actually ran into a field operative, one of the agency spooks. I was running that uh, uh, election for the mayor of the city of Fallujah. And I asked him, I said, I've got to know for my soul, is that a fair vote? He, said, he laughed. He's like, are you effing kidding me? He said, we didn't even, we didn't even dump him out of the box and count him. We just, we just put our guy over it. You know, basically, hey, here's a house, not in your name. Here's a Mercedes, not in your name. Here's a stipend that will let you keep uh, an above average size harem. And uh, don't screw it up. If your conscience gets to bother you, you see this big starving city out here of 250,000 people, I'm sure somebody will answer this phone and do what we tell them for the same gig you've got. So. Answer this phone and stay in touch. We'll, don't call us, we'll call you. That's how these agencies run the world. And I'd seen that. Then I saw that at home. I got sick to my stomach. And I gathered my children up. It was seven children at the time. And uh, we had twins shortly after that. But I gather them up and said, children, I don't know what's coming, but I don't have a good feeling. And daddy needs to go find the truth. If this election was stolen, then I know where this goes. It'll go the way of every other civil war that I've ever seen anywhere in the world. Because I'm not going to stand for it. I, I'm not going to be here at my farm and let the soldiers come round up my family. So there will come a day, I, I, just, I have to know what route we're headed on. I have to know if it was stolen or if that's just, it looks that way from the outside. So I set out, asked God where to lead me. I didn't have telegram, I didn't have anybody listening, it didn't matter. I had to know for myself. And I ended up finding, getting about 60 affidavits in 11 states for fraud. And I knew that it was a pattern. It was nationwide. And what they were doing uh, was on purpose. And then at a big enough scale that uh, it absolutely turned the entire election. So then I knew. I spent some time trying to wake people up to that. And that's kind of where that following came from on Telegram. I'm at a point now, one thing I ask the Lord every day, every single day, is 
after I thank him, we have so much to be grateful for. You know, I got a clean shirt on. I put this on this morning. I've, I don't know how many times in my life I've lived without, didn't have the opportunity to bathe for weeks at a time. Um, living off the map, you know. And then we have, we're so pampered, and we have this idea that God's going to keep the lights on and the AC running, and I don't think that's the case. Uh, but every day I ask him, what's next? What do I do today? Sometimes that looks different. Um, you know, there's other people that do one thing, they do it well, and they have a big following and all this, and it grows. And I just, a little bit of following I have is grateful. I've met a lot of them in person, just like you. Man, there's a connection, man. When you serve, when you follow Jesus, you've already put your life, your livelihood, your sword on the altar, committed to God. You recognize that in other people. And the fellowship there is beautiful. So in lieu of getting paid, I often tell my wife, I believe, that the, that the friendships and the connections that we have out of pouring our soul into the dust, it, seems, it feels like at times, is, is the company, the friendship of warriors. Yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. You're, you're in that number. Amen. Yeah, we, I definitely felt the connection. I loved, uh, we, we met down in Greenville, and I just loved hearing you speak because you spoke like a man who is walking with the Holy Spirit, seeing awesome things, seeing weird things on a daily basis, almost, it seems. Um, and, I mean, I'm learning that that's normal Christianity. Uh, you, know, you, know, you know what? I don't, I don't know if it's normal. I know it's always been to some extent, but I, I don't know if we are waking up to it more or if God's pouring out something that he has not poured out completely in the past. But it seems like there are a lot of people that are learning to listen and then act. And until we do those two things, we don't have a hope. So could you tell us about your journey a little bit? Because I know you you were in the Marines. I, I just learned you know, in our story today, that your your father passed away. You mentioned, and I've seen this on your channel, that um, you've been doxxed by Satanists. And I know you, obviously, you have to poke the nest a little bit, um, or I assume that you poked the nest a little bit to, to get that kind of attention. Where Where did your journey come from? Have you always been walking with the Lord since you were young, or was there a turning point for you? Uh, I've, I've always known the Lord, and I've always shared the gospel, lost, and early on it was more out of uh, like a sense of duty, mm -hmm. and when I speak the gospel to whoever, you know, whether they wanted to hear it or not, it's kind of a burden to them and a burden to me, and, and that has evolved into, uh, I've, always, I've always walked with the Lord, sometimes more intensely than others. Uh, this last probably five years has been just indescribable. And uh, what what triggered that for you? Well, for me, I was involved in business and uh, you know pursuing the American dream, right? Mm -hmm. Still create you you have dreams you go crush them and then you also share the world with people along the way and then i met somebody at a business conference down in orlando florida and she was from canada and she messaged me on facebook like a couple weeks later and said hey i really feel like i'm supposed to introduce you to this guy kenya and i said well i'm super busy would you pray about it a few days and make sure it's from the Lord and not just, you know, something you've come up with? She said, yeah. So she's coming back a few days later. She said, yeah, it's of the Lord. I need to introduce you. So set that up, and 
ended up it was a pastor with about eight churches and about 200 people per church. They averaged less than one Bible per church. He had a Bible, and then the pa- the pastors that were over the local churches that he did a route kind of had a piece of a Bible. I mean, it might start in Numbers and end in Titus, you know. And uh, so I started running Bibles overseas, and uh, I, I get calls every single day asking for Bibles. But when all this started here, it was like the Lord said, I got something for you to do at home for a little bit. So I expect to go back overseas any day. I'm praying about something right now. I got a, a, a frantic call for help. There's some things being done over there, and, and it's brutal. And plug my phone up. It's brutal, and it's not right. Where was that? I, I... Well, without giving too much info, because I'm praying about it, and I'm not trying to arm Satan with knowledge, you know. Mm-hmm. There's uh, there's some things going on that aren't right, some humanitarian uh, disasters, and some different tribesmen are asking me to come like, tell the story. Okay. The people that will pray and apply put Local pressure. I don't know if that's where God would have me, but I say that it's diverse. We ask Him, "What would you have us do today?" Mm-hmm. Man, it might it might be go to. I just got a call from Nevada, like one of the hardest, crustiest old Marines I've ever known. Uh, I've given him the gospel over whiskey and hash. Uh, drinking whiskey and smoking hash. He was. <laughs> I was just drinking whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him. I gave him the gospel. My like, brother, I'm concerned for your soul. He just said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father except by me." And you have this idea that you're doing good for people, and it kind of outweighs some of the violence that you've done in the past. That's not enough, brother. I'm concerned for your soul. And he's like, brother, I'm just I'm not ready yet. But just know that I'm here. I'm listening. So I, I had a picture of my truck, and I put my hand over his picture and asked God to draw him to himself every day. And that's been the last three years. I believe he called me this past week and asked me to come baptize him wow. in the Colorado that's awesome. I did hear that Man, this morning. That's awesome. <laughs> that, is, that is exciting. It is. Know? And so, run out there, and then, you know, where do you get money for tickets? Sometimes, sometimes I'll somebody will call me out of the blue and buy a motorcycle or a truck or something I've gotten a good deal on just for such a time as this, you know. Sometimes somebody will call me and say, hey, I got some extra airline points need them I'm like yeah I actually need to fly into Nevada overnight right quick mm. those kind of things happen God just provides you know so when did you start uh, seeing things like this have you always seen things like this have you always done things like praying over a picture I don't think you know I, I was raised in kind of a uh, you could call it a charismatic type of home but um, I was born to be careful around be careful around charismatics. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah. You know, it's it's been a it's been a journey. I've always seen God provide in in mysterious ways. Um, but something that kind of I started. I was working with a lot of different Africans that were telling me what God was telling them in dreams, and I'm like, ah, if He's gonna tell you, He's gonna tell you in His Word. You know, mm-hmm. well, they didn't have a Bible, so they're relying heavily on the Holy Spirit in absence of His written word. And I just came back and I asked God one day. I was like, God, if you are still talking to your children in dreams, would you please? I know you don't owe me this. Like, I'm just a a donkey, 
in the supply line. But if you would let me have a dream, if you would give me a dream so I would know what you'd have me do. Like, so I would be less skeptical, Mm -hmm. rather, of your children, who that's your primary way of communicating with them. And he did. Two weeks later, I had a dream that I was able to corroborate. It told me about somebody in my organization that was backstabbing me. So it checked out. And then after that, it's like I know I know when he's speaking to me in a dream. Wow. You know, I haven't had him very often, maybe a couple times a year. But I'm grateful for him mm. when I get him, you know. And so then I ended up in a situation. I, I went into one country and crossed the border into another and had an appointment with this witch doctor that you couldn't, like, you couldn't just call up because he, Anyway, I gave him the gospel, and something followed me back. It 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 got nasty, mm. and uh, the darkness. There was a there was a little girl coming later that day to meet me to see if she could get her first Bible. Along, you know, she was headed to the meeting place that about three hundred people were meeting. You know, and Two neighboring tribesmen gang raped her, tore up pretty bad, left in the bushes. And uh, and I found that, so I was praying around an uh, area that God would, would claim, claiming ground, claiming territory, while I'm waiting on this witch doctor to come out. And, uh, and just putting boundaries around this place where not, no darkness can come here. This is now the ground is occupied by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and his people. And we ask you to come into this place. And if you don't serve Jesus, you have no authority here. Get out. I don't want even want you to stand around and listen to what we're saying. Go 100 miles and report to your whoever you report to that you are not welcome in this place. And then so they left and they went and raped this little girl. It was my like I I can't prove that, but I know that. I knew of the spirit that that was a counterattack. Man, I bawled my eyes out because I was wanting to track him down, but I was the wrong guy for that job. They had other tribesmen out tracking him. I wanted to join on that hunt, and yet it just it just the Lord said this is. This is a counterattack. They went after, you sent them out of the place you were in. They went after a child that was coming to meet you because they knew it would hurt you. It was just Satan fights so dirty. And from that place, something followed me back to the U.S. and started tormenting my, my children. Started hearing voices and that, that was a whole journey of like, God, how do we deal with this? And learning to pray in authority versus learning to, you know, begging. I'd always, up to that point, I'd prayed, I'd ask for things. But I'm learning to pray in authority. Yeah, let me just, uh, just maybe you could just walk us through that a little bit, um, because I think that's a really important thing, and I'm learning that too. Uh, And what was the difference when you started, you know, you're begging God for stuff, and then you start praying with authority? What is the difference? Uh, what what different result? And the difference is massive results. Okay. <laughs> so it's like it's like uh, I mean, it's like if I was a guest in in your home and I see you're in your office and you're like James, hey, if uh, I've got to run into town, but if any, and I'm taking my family with me. Nobody else should be coming by here if if we've had some threats here lately. And if they come by here, you tell them to leave or you can shoot them. I don't care what it is. But the people I know, care about, know not to come by here for, for now. Okay. Now I have authority. I have the authority of the man of the house in your place, right? 
It's not my authority, it's your authority. But if somebody comes in there and walks in the door and starts unplugging wires, I'm like, hold, hold up, you need to leave. I'm like, well, I want to be here, whatever. Doesn't matter what he says, I've got the authority that Carl gave me to run you off. So you can go gentle or you can go with a knots and bruises, but you're going to go right now. And that authority is is different than if you hadn't empowered me. So somebody comes, I'm like, do you know Carl? Like, I know who Carl is. All the devil's games. Now you're asking, hey, hey God, can you, can you help me? Can you ask him to leave me alone? Like, I gave you the authority that I gave my son Jesus. And you're asking me? For if I've already given you that authority. That victory is won on the cross. Tell him to leave in Jesus' name. And it's it's been a crazy journey. It's a profound thing, and it seems to me that it's, uh, the only reason it's like that is because God wants us to choose to participate with him because obviously he yeah. could do it yes yes uh you want to hear a, a short story yes i do it's a wild story if you come from the background that i came from okay from your background it might not be so wild but uh this was very recently this was somewhere in the carolinas but it wasn't the trip it was like three or four months ago it was before i found out i had pancreatic cancer Right. It's like previous to that. That's a whole other story. But I went in this, I had spoken somewhere and they had, had put me up in a hotel. Okay. I don't charge speaking fees. The message that comes is from the Lord. I can't tell what it's going to be beforehand. I pray about it. And you definitely can't charge for something that comes from the Lord, you know? <laughs> As, as inconvenient as that is, I just, that's where I'm at. I, so they were like, well, at least let's put you up in a hotel room. I was like, I can sleep in my truck, but yeah, that'd be great. So put me up in a hotel room and I forgot to pray over my room. I forgot to, just like in the military, you walk in, well, to this day, even not in the military, I check, I, I, I clear the room. I make sure there's no people in it. I've been doing that for years, but now, I make sure there's nobody in the bathroom or closets and under the bed. We're good. All right. Room's clear. And I do that spiritually. And I forgot to this day. And I was watching TV, which I don't normally do, and I fell asleep. And I woke up. And this woman was standing over my feet. I had gone out on the balcony and prayed over the city and I left that sliding glass door open about that far well when I woke up so I had prayed I had just not prayed to clear the room right I had not in authority said this is the territory of those who serve Jesus tonight anybody else needs to get out So I woke up and this woman was standing over my feet and I just sensed this beauty and this evil that was almost, that was like almost dripping. It's hard to, hard to describe except beautiful woman, evil. She had this straight hair that covered her, like was hanging down. I couldn't see her face. So the beauty was what I sensed was beauty. And I didn't feel like her feet were on the floor. It was like she was hovering. As soon as I woke up, I saw it. I mean, it was a a half a second. I knew, damn it, I forgot to pray over the room. Woke up, pardon the French. Woke up, and I said, you can't be here. You need to get out right now in Jesus' name. And she just, like, looked at me like a hiss, like, and then she just, shot out and like vapor up just went through that crack in the door i was like i've got to remember to clear rooms before i go to sleep if there's anything else in here that's not serve jesus get out now in the name of jesus you can't be here i've got to get some sleep 
room went peaceful. Lay down, slept like a baby. Woke up seven hours later. The best. Wow. It's just practical, and it's not super spiritual. Mm-hmm. And I actually didn't accidentally say damn it earlier. So it's on purpose. Right. Because we have this whole idea, these notions that, you know, you have to be, like, perfect before you come to Christ. He saves us in our brokenness. And then sometimes seeking God looks different for some people than others. And I have access to a really rough crowd of people. If I don't, I'm personally, this is me, this is not, I wouldn't preach on this for you to go do, for someone else. I'm just telling you where I'm at. I'm convicted of the intent behind my words. So I talked to some Marines one day in particular. And uh, I, I, I spoke their language, and it just I communicated with them, and they understood, and that involves some, some very colorful profanity. And my conscience never pricked me. The Holy Spirit never nudged me, other than to give them the gospel, which I did. And then that afternoon, I was in traffic, and I pulled into this parking lot. And I kind of cut through a parking lot, which is not polite, but it looked clear. And the, oops, I pulled out in front of somebody crossing the parking lot. I was like, sorry. I went on through, and somebody else did the same thing to me. And I was like, come on, moron. And I just said it about that loud. He didn't know it. But man, the Holy Spirit was just like, just smote me. Mm. I was so convicted that I spoke a curse over someone. I spoke an ill word. I spoke a bad attitude. I was like, God, forgive me for calling this man a moron. And also forgive me for the separate sin of just being a hypocrite. I just did the very same thing Mm. like back there. I didn't have to tell him. He had already impressed (laughs) me. Hey, you hypocrite. You're judgmental, curse-speaking hypocrite. And I confessed in brokenness before the like that broke me. Mm. And yet the profanity is so I do that because if you know me or know me for long, you'll you'll see rough edges, you know. It's not all put on Facebook or or Telegram or Truth Social. I'm trying to move over to Truth Social, but we gotta quit pretending. Mm-hmm. The war is nasty. It is a sprawl. And it is spiritual more than it is physical. Hmm. And those who have a come apart over a whole letter word are slight. Got, got real wars going on. Can't be distracted yeah. by little things, you know? So you mentioned before in talking about, you know, denominations and stuff that you're not here to save an organization. Um, you know, the United States of America is an organization. You're the Constitution cowboy. What do you what do you see? Um, you know, obviously we want to save the United States. We want we don't want the United States to be consumed by communism. We don't want it to be consumed by chaos. Uh, what is the solution? And what are because I think that's it seems to me that's what your 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 traveling has everything to do with being the solution. What are you What are you doing, and what are you recommending for other people to be doing right now? The main thing is encouraging people to go to God and ask, "What would you have of me?" And then put that into action. And you got to take. We have to take our homes back. So. We're like, I want to save the country. What do I do next, God? And he's like, start having an evening devotion with your family. I want something cool, God. Like, I, you know, I want, I want to turn over tables like you did in the temple. He's like, yeah, well, there'll be time for that. Right now, I want you to start having devotion with your family because right now they don't know the difference between Moses and Noah. They don't know that Jesus was the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Mm-hmm. He's a propitiation through faith in his blood, the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God. These things aren't like 
they're not getting it at Sunday school. It's not our job as fathers and parents to outsource the training of our children. We have to train them ourselves and teach them the ways of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's how we get our country back. We also, I believe, have to be planting food and producing. Right now is the time to produce, to start a business, provide a service. We've got to build outside the matrix so that the matrix can continue to crumble. It's crumbling, by the way. Mm. Good news. Yeah. And it's struggling. And they own the news channels. So there's a whole lot. You don't realize how bad they're struggling because they're telling you they're not. This and that. But um, it is getting distractingly hot in here. So I'm going to turn this AC okay. on so that uh, even if that fuzzies the sound a little bit, we're just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> okay. Fair but, enough. Uh, my, my goal is is to challenge men and women to, to take the daily steps necessary to turn the whole country. And if everyone went and started handing out constitutions or teaching constitution classes or like, I'm not asking people to do what I'm doing or to join any other entity. God might have you join an entity or a movement. By golly, let it be because you asked him and not because you sorted it out or you saw something on my channel you liked or somebody else's. Does that make sense? Yeah, just obeying the Lord. Right. In the little things. And, it, and then as soon as you get those out of the way, he starts sending you on, on harder missions and further out. And I had a, I had a African brother that wears a blanket and carries a walking stick. He told me, I, am, I just had a dream, and I believe I'm to go and give the gospel in China. If God can call a African tribesman to go to China, communist child that gives the gospel. It didn't start with that. It started with um, small things. Feeding widows from his farm. So he's, well, first of all, he was a cattleman. He had never planned anything. It was like the Lord said, hey, I have all these blessings for those who plant food and plant, you know, their soil and, and you can't have any of those blessings because you're not planting anything so we started planting things and then to incur blessing on his farm he started feeding widows hmm. orphans from his farm and now God is sending him abroad I believe is the next thing but that journey is just one of obedience and it starts small it doesn't ever start big Amen well, James, I just want to thank you for your time. I know I could talk to you more. I, th I think that you have other appointments to get to. Uh, I do. But I would I would love to, two things right quick. I would, maybe we come back later and talk about them. One is beating cancer holistically. That was when, as soon as I found out, that it was like God said, you're not going to uh, not going to go back to a doctor, and you're not going to get a miraculous healing. Okay, let me just recap that because uh, it cut out for a minute. So you said, as soon as you heard you got pancreatic cancer, you heard the Lord say, you're not going to a doctor, and you're not getting immediate healing. You're not getting a miraculous healing. Miraculous. Immediate. Okay. So basically, there's going to be hard work that has to be done, and then you're going to tell people about it. Hmm. And I uh, every time I give testimony to that, it brings out some hate. I'm talking people get pissed. Hmm. I don't know. It's rowing some demons. Up. What did they get mad about? Well, they say is uh, because I didn't go back to the medical world. Hmm. Is it people that have had cancer that get mad at you, or some of, them, some of them have had loved ones that 
died of what I had, and I shouldn't. If they died after two years and drained the family finances, then I shouldn't have uh, be able to get over it as quick as I did. Stuff like that. Oh wow! But, <clears throat> but that's the thing. Anyway, there's a whole story there if you want to talk about it another time. And then the other thing is. I got docs like a week ago on Facebook. I'm the only James Charles Phillips on Facebook, so I'm kind of easy to find there. But got docs. I had like 30,000 vile, vile comments and shares. And it was all because I drew a correlation between a deity that takes the sacrifices of children. And I drew the correlation to a children's toy that is put in sonic packs and I mean it got nasty to include them doing seances to that very deity to try to curse my family which they can't do because the blood of Jesus is stronger in one drop than the whole kingdom of darkness yeah That's not allowed right right but I'm telling you I was told you now have real Satanists coming after you this is from a Satanist because you opened your mouth. Wow. Over a over a toy that they said was not really satanic in a sonic happy meal or whatever you call that. You know what I know that I can't prove? We just need to talk about it later, but I believe that he, that Smith had a the way Satan conducts war. Like you take a toy you pattern after evil that desensitizes and preconditions children. And then before you ship them out, you have a three or four day seance and call in powers of darkness to accompany each one of those spoons or toys or whatever it is into the homes and to the torment the end user. You know how we know they did that? Because of the porn king back in the, I think it was 70s and 80s, maybe early 90s. VHS tapes, you could order these VHS pornos. The guy manufacturing all this would bring in the actors and actresses for three days and just have a, a party, let them relax, chill, feed them well, whatever. And they would do seances over them. And then they would take that master copy after they shot the movies for a few days or weeks or whatever it was. And they'd take those master copies and they would do seances over them. And then when they went to manufacture and they brought in these pallets of VHS pornos to go out into the homes of Americans everywhere, they would call in. They would have a ceremony to call in the powers of darkness to accompany each one to its end user and torment that end user and you wonder why pornography has such a group of people. Wow. Satan does not play fair. Mm -mm. So I didn't really see the spoon. My daughter was like, Dad, look at this. This is not good. I said, how do you know? Do you know it or do you feel it? She said, I feel it. It just it feels evil. Mm. Get out of the truck. Threw it out the window in the parking lot. I called the manager. Told him to come get this. Like, I'm not touching it. This is satanic. You can't have, you cannot be giving this to our children. You've got to draw the line. And he wouldn't come out and talk to me. Uh, I, I put it on social media and it went viral. 30,000 uh, comments is I'm a talking. Lot. Yes, and comments like they're too vile and despicable. You can go see. I encourage people to, if you wonder if we're fighting good and evil, go look at my comments. Just scroll down to the post that has, is like gangbusters. It's stuff about Jesus that you wouldn't say you wouldn't put in a Hustler magazine about a normal person. Wow dark that to me is what you know when you go around praying over hotels or i have a couple of bibles that i have ready to give away that i start just praying over 
you know, stuff that many people in the church would call weird. When you hear stuff like that, it's like what we should be doing so much more than than um, what Satanists are doing. I mean, we have life to give. Amen. And then you've got people in church. I, I keep having people message me like, hey, dude, you need to take that stuff down. It's not doing anything but causing division. I'm like, division? You give my child a spoon. That looks like the deity you sacrifice children to. And I'm like, hey, this looks awfully familiar. You ought to ask God what in your home is has occultic ties. Just mm. ask him if you get it out of your home. That's all. That's my entire message. Yeah. And if it goes viral, I'm getting doxxed in one satanic group after another. And they're coming onto my thread by the dro- swarms like F you and F your God and F Jesus on the cross. And that's like the mild versions. Mm-hmm. Like it is, it is good versus evil. Jesus and his father against the God of this world, the Lord of the flies. Amen. The Lord of the dumb. And when we realize it, it clears us up to go fight. Right. And so if you see somebody fighting, that's, I had a long time friend tell me, she said, I just, it seems like you're always fighting something that none of the rest of us can see. It's just like, uh, I just think you're, you're nuts. I think you're crazy. Mm-hmm. You went too nice. Um, you know, Maybe we are fighting something the rest of you can't see yet, but may God reveal it because it is there. Amen. Amen. It is your children, it is tormenting their minds. I had, a, I had a friend take a phone call the other day, and a little daughter came up. And I was like, she had her little video game playing. I'm like, what is she just curious what's on this video game? Man, I wouldn't let that video game in our house it was dark and it's basically babysitting this kid we don't even know we don't know what our children are just mainlining through their eyes I struggle with memorizing scripture right now when I was that age I could memorize two verses a day and be verbatim word for word and have it forever and they're using that teachable time to pipe junk into their little minds yeah it's a time so to have to our own homes and ask god what to do next it's too overwhelming if you try to do it yourself you just ask god what's next and he'll show you and you do one thing at a time amen <laughs> and greater is he it's that is in us yes yes yeah well james uh, it's it's uh been great uh, chatting with you, and I want to catch up with you again because we are both having adventures right now, and I think um, there are so many more people that need to come on board. And when we hear, when I hear your stories, it it just motivates me. You know, it it encourages me. Um, so thank you for being who you are and doing what you're doing. Um, and may the Lord bless and protect your family. Uh, sounds like your kids are growing up to be warriors. And so I just bless each one of your children with the knowledge of the love of the Father, with the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit, with discernment, with God's protection, um, and with all provision. Everything that you guys need will be provided in the Lord. And so we just bless the Phillips family, and we thank, thank God for you. In Jesus' name. I receive it, brother. Thank you. Amen. And those blessings turn to your own head. And when you get this ready, shoot me a link. I'll put it out on some places that might get you, might, you know, get views. Or other. <laughs> okay. Might get fake, might get some nasty, but maybe this is exactly, may this message, scripture and the truth within it, reach those who need to hear it. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. God bless God you, bless James. You. We'll be in touch.